I think a lot about my past life as having been almost like I was an act. Was I living a double life? Growing up, Abby Stein struggled with her identity inside an ultra-Orthodox Jewish community. I think I was a happy child, specifically until I got older and I started realizing that I don't get along and I can't really make friends with boys and I don't enjoy most of the sports and the things they play. That's because Abby says she was really a girl born inside a boy's body. There were times that I tried to tell myself, you are simply wrong and it's impossible what you're feeling. As she grew up, she followed in the footsteps of her ancestors, becoming a rabbi and getting married. For me personally, there was a lot of expectations because of my family, which in the Hasidic community has been ruled for the past like 150 years or so by these royal rabbinic families that kind of all marry each other. And for me, that meant being a descendant obviously was a big deal. That pressure finally came to a boiling point in 2011 when she got light altering news. I got the news that we are expecting my son. And for me, that final punchline of I am so much struggling with who I am. Four years later, Abby says she made the decision to finally live her truth as a transgender woman. At the end of the day, I am who I am today, of which I'm very proud and happy and comfortable because of the sum total of my experiences. And I think that is very powerful. Abby Stein's memoir is Becoming Eve, my journey from ultra-Orthodox rabbi to transgender woman. And she's here this morning with us. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks so take that. me back to a moment. It was a powerful moment in the book. I think you were 20 years old. You lived your whole life, you say, in this sheltered environment as a man. Um, and you couldn't ignore this feeling anymore. So I think you took a friend's tablet. Yeah. Is that right? That was um, literally a few days after my son was born. And I had a friend who had a tablet that I don't know if it was ever connected to the internet because the internet is the worst thing you can do in the community. Mm. I took it, went to a public mall that I actually visited yesterday for the first time again. Wow. And found a bathroom, it was a unisex bathroom, that had a public Wi-Fi connection. And it was the first time I went online. And what did you search? So the first thing that I searched was whether a boy could turn into a girl in Hebrew, didn't speak English at all. And that led me to the first the Hebrew Wikipedia page that was talking about transgender. And it was wow. the first time that I heard that term. I identified as such without having words for it since I remember myself. And then from there, I was led to forums, online forums, mostly in Hebrew. And, and then when slow. did you do that? Did you just whisk away to search? And I spent a lot of hours in that bathroom, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> which was, yeah. Wow. Um, and later on, I sneaked in a cell phone, which is the part of the Internet. As much as the community is trying to ban it, you can't. If someone wants Internet, they're going to have Internet, which is what happened with me. Um, wow. Yeah. So you, you, you write the, the, the circumcision of your son was kind of this... Yeah this moment, you felt your world kind of collapse in on you. I felt like gender is punching me in the face, to put wow. it quite literal, because it was also, even leading up to that, we all gender babies before they're conceived, I say, like everyone is like, are you gonna do a pink or blue nursery because it really matters, mm. and stuff like that, and that happened even in my community. And the circumcision was like the final punchline. It was like, here's someone that I am supposed to raise as a boy, I have no idea what's going on with me other than how I identify. It could be genetic, what if my son is feeling the same thing? And how could I bring someone and raise someone in the world if I don't know who I am? Wow. What's, what's your relationship like now with your seven-year-old son? Uh, that's a good question that I will let him answer when he's 18. Wow. <laughs> okay. I, I keep my son's life private. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do have a relationship. Um, you can ask him when he's 18. Okay. <laughs> I mean that. I mean that. I don't... I think, like, my son's life is very... It's very mm -hmm. important to me to keep that private okay. as much as my life isn't. Okay. Yeah. So, well, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, when you came out to your family, what, what was their reaction? I only came out to my dad, and I had a two-hour conversation, which is the epilogue of the book, which didn't go as much as I was hoping. I did manage to push him to an extreme where he agreed that trans people exist, which is far from a given from an ultra-Orthodox Hasidic rabbi right. who pretty much works for something called a modesty squad. That's a real thing. And he is not someone who is open to the world. And then he was saying, yes, it's possible, but there's no way for you to know. Then I'm telling him, I think two therapists and a doctor are good enough. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, you need a very holy person, mm -hmm. which was his way of telling me not, there's nothing you can tell me. Which is also what taught me a lot about, I think, bigotry and transphobia in so-called religious communities, where I realized it's usually not religion and it's not God. It's people and it's the culture, which is why it was a big deal for my dad. So you were the sixth of 13 children. Your family raised you as 
family. the eldest boy <laughs> in the family. Yeah. What about your family, your siblings, your friends? I'm in touch with some of my siblings, uh, two of them out of 12, which doesn't sound like a lot, but most people my age only have two siblings. And I'm in touch with 10 to 15 of my first cousins, again, out of a few hundred first cousins. Wow. But most people my age don't have more than that, so I focus on the positive part. Uh, the community, everyone stopped talking to me when I left, which was in 2012 before I even came out. And to be honest, I don't miss them. I was gonna ask you, is there anything about it that you miss? The family, community? yes. The community, family. not really. I have so many friends, maybe too many to keep up with. Yeah. I'm fine, I'm not worried about them. Wow. Do you still practice Judaism? Um, in some ways, yes. I like to say I don't observe, I celebrate in a very strong way. Um, I've done, over the past three and a half years, probably 300, probably 400 by now, I lost track of public speeches and more than half of them have been for Jewish communities. Oh, wow. um, I'm very engaged, specifically in New York, with the activist, Jewish activist crowd, which has been really growing um, really fast, really strongly. Um, I've been involved a lot with the organizing, with uh, a group Never Again Action, which has been Ooh. organizing about ICE, and mm -hmm. I am very politically involved. I know the book isn't political, but I am very politically involved. Sure, Abby, sorry. what would you say to somebody who is in your position, whether it's, say, in an ultra-Orthodox uh, situation or a very conservative religion, uh, and they're, they're struggling right now. You're not alone. It's the single most important thing. Whenever I think if someone could go back and I could tell, tell one thing to my nine-year-old, 12-year-old self, is know that you're not alone. And when I started out, one of my first uh, kind of missions, when I was starting on my activism, and I had someone asking me, what is your tangible goal? What is going to be your first thing that you can actually touch on? Because if you're an activist and you don't have a tangible goal, you're going to get exhausted really fast. So I said, I want the Hasidic community to become transphobic, which sounds weird to say that I want them to be that, but for th that would mean that they would recognize that we exist, wow. which is extremely important. And I can say three and a half years later, mission accomplished, the Hasidic community is officially transphobic, which yeah. didn't exist growing up, but at least now they talk about it, which is very important to me. Abby Stein, thank you for coming in. Thank Again, you. Abby's memoir is called Becoming Eve, My Journey from Ultra-Orthodox Rabbi to Transgender Woman. You can find more about it on today.com slash shop.